Support our ministry today by liking this video and hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and follow our Facebook page for more inspiration. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School lesson. My name is Reverend Theron L. Jones I and I'm an Associate Minister at the Great Acquaintance Missionary Baptist Church located in Chicago, Illinois, where our pastor is Reverend Kevin Wilkes. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, teach me your ways that I might be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, and thank God. Our lesson for today is entitled, Praise for God's Ultimate Justice. And our background scripture is Psalms 9 and Ecclesiastics, the third chapter, verses 16 to 22. And our main thought or memory verse is Psalms 9 and verse 8, which reads thus, And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall men of judgment to the people in uprightness. And in this quarter, we continue with the theme of celebrating God and unit two for the month of October, call to praise God. Psalms nine is one of several alphabetic acrostics in the Psalms. And what this means is that each verse, stanza, or other pattern of lines begins with a successive letter of the alphabet. In English, simply put, line one would start with A, and line 10 would be the 10th alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J in that order. But depending on the language, because alphabets are different, it could change the entire meaning of the poem. This song was written by David, who was called the sweetest psalmist of Israel, 2 Samuel, 23rd chapter in the first verse, who is accredited for 73 of the 150 songs, almost half, and references in the New Testament, Acts 1, 16 to 20, Acts 2, 25 to 28, Romans 4, verses 6 through 8, increase his total. So, David is accredited would have written over half the Psalms. And many of the Psalms, the authors are not even known. The heart in verse 1. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. We're not talking about this pumping heart. We're referring to our intellect and not emotions, but the very center of our being. When we use our heart, we did, that's a deliberate decision to praise God with our entire being. Everything we do should be in praise of God for he is and for what he has done. We, we got to let the world see the work of God. It says, is thy marvelous works. Verse 1b, from creation, his providence, God is the only one in control of anything. His favor on Israel and what he done for each of us with humility. 
We got to boast, but not brag. God's providence is over all things. Everything God created, man, animal, the solar system, vegetation, etc., is still the way that God created it. That's why, you know, they talk about evolution. Why, why stuff didn't keep evolving? The way God made it is the way it is today, with the exception of those things that we as humans have destroyed or are working on destroying. And to be glad and rejoice is the same thing it says. Verse 2, I will be glad and rejoice. That's a double level putting emphasis on what we're supposed to do. The psalmist said, I, it's personal. I can't praise God for you. You can't pray. We can praise him together. But you can only give thanks and praise him individually for what he done for you. And I can do it for what he done for me. And, and the word name in verse 2b calls by it was used when you call somebody by this name it was used for one thing and one thing only, it was to identify God in a respectful way to refer to him. And because you got to remember, this is also used in 2 Samuel 22 and 50. It's also used in Psalms 92 and 1. The name God, but the name God revealed to Moses is Exodus 3 and 14 is I am or Yahweh, which can be also interpreted, translated to Lord. This tells us God is who he says he is and will do what he says he will do. He's unchanging. And, and God was first called by this name by Melchizedek, a precursor of Christ. Hebrews 7 and 1, Hebrews 7 and 11, Hebrews 7 and 17, and Psalms 110 and 4. Very little was known about this priest, but it said that he was a high priest. No history, there's no written of any history of his whole life. His name is mentioned. Those three or four times in the Bible, it was always with a priest. And they said he was a precursor, a type of Christ. And higher than any so-called gods, rulers and anything else, we must be confronted. We might be confronted by, as God's people, the most high. Again, in verse 2b, our greatest joy and hope is being God's plan of salvation. Because under the law, there was no redemption. He had to keep on doing, he had to keep on sacrificing. But the plan of salvation, there was one sacrifice for all. And that's what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's go to verse 3 and say, when my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish in thy presence. All the battles God's people have faced, and David had many enemies, the Philistines, the Jubasites, the Amalekites, just to name a few, but they all were defeated because of God was with David and Israel as he is with us 
as believers today. And he will fight our battles if we move out of the way and let God be God. When we do the right thing and follow God, he will maintain us because our cause is lined up with God's will, with his will. And he judges righteously. Nobody else judges righteously, verse 4. Even in victory, it must be done according to the word of God. Justly, because without God, there would be no victory. And when you understand this song, okay, let's read verse 5. Thou have rebuked the heathens, thou hast destroyed the wicked, thou hast put out their name forever and ever. It doesn't matter who David's or our enemies are, how big the nature of them, their name, or anything else. They can't stand up to our God. They are destroyed, and even their names are irrelevant. God is in righteousness, have destroyed enemies of David, that they don't even exist anymore for their cities. Verse 6 a. Any nation that doesn't turn to God is an enemy of God and shall be dealt with according to God's word. And so are memories of them. Look, let's read verse 6. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them. Hmm. Completely destroyed. And verse 7, but the Lord shall endure forever. He has prepared his throne for judgment. Nothing is forever but God. And he sits on his throne, ruling over and judging his creation. And those who choose not to follow him shall face the judgment meant for them. God judges all with righteousness because he is righteous. He is the only one that can do it in that way. A verse 8, it says, that's our memory verse. And he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. God don't punish us. Actually, we judge ourselves by the way we live our life. And then God has no choice but to go according to his word. He can't go against his word. Wrong is wrong, and right is right. In verse 9, David now moves from talking against the wicked to talk about those looked at as second class citizens who God is always concerned with to oppress. As we, his people, we also should always be concerned with them. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Let's go right to verse 10 and put this together. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. To truly know his name is not a mere belief in God. But we as believers must truly seek God for ourselves individually, to know God intimately for ourselves. We must put our trust in him by knowing his word, 
to be able to live as God wants us to live, and not ourselves or the world. God is our refuge. I just read verse 9 and 10. When we can't go on, he will go on for us and he'll carry us. It's a poem. Footprints. It talks about walking side by side with God. And to get to the end, the, the man asked God, where was you when I couldn't walk no more? And he said, God told me. I was carried on my back. And David invites the people to join in and sing praises with him to God because God had done so much for them and let the world know to declare it. Verse 11, sing praises to the Lord which dwelleth in Zion, declare among the people his doom. God values life, and those who destroy life, blood, in verse 12, must and will answer to God when he make an inquisition for blood. He remembereth them, he forgetteth not the cry of the humble. And God is also concerned with justice and will administer it to all. God hears the cries of the humble as he heard the cries of Israel and will deliver all in his time. And we come to the end of this lesson. Ultimately, God and God alone will be the final judge. All God has never and will never ignore oppression, whether caused by war or unjust ruling, or some by others. We must know, trust, and seek God because he is our only true ally, our refuge. We need this hope and faith. We have, we must share in love with the world, the goodness of God, so that he may become the hope of all, that all may be saved. And again, again, on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Kevin Wilkes, we thank you for being a part of our Sunday school lesson. Let us pray. Father, God bless you. God keep us all. Amen. Thank God. Thank you for joining us today. We hope and pray that this Sunday School lesson has made you want to learn just a little bit more about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why don't you join us for our Sunday School at 10 o'clock, morning worship at 1130. We look forward to seeing you there. Until then, tell somebody you love them.